everyone, in today's photo shoot behind the scenes video, we are going to be doing a comparison between the Sigma 35mm 1.4 and the Canon 35mm 1.4 Mark II. So we are going to be doing a bunch of different portrait photo shoot tests, comparing different apertures, different lighting situations. We're going to do a bokeh test and also a movement test as well tree is attacking my hair and we are going to see if the more expensive Canon version is worth the extra money or if the more affordable Sigma version is good enough for portrait photography we're gonna get started on taking some photos and I really hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful okay I'm gonna make sure the settings are the same I'm gonna start with like kind of like a mid body shot and we'll just start and kind of see how we go the first comparison we're starting with is a mid-length portrait wide open. I tend to find lenses struggle to focus wide open at mid to full length portraits, so I thought this would be an interesting place to start. I am using a single focus point on both 5D Mark IVs throughout this entire photo shoot and always placing it on my model's eyes, so both cameras are set up exactly the same. In this comparison, both photos are in focus, but I do notice that the Canon version is that little bit sharper with more details. All right, and then let's walk down to that little white wall. I actually get a full body shot of you just here. So I'm gonna shoot with an aperture of 4.5 and get a full body shot and just see how sharp both these lenses are. At f4.5, I found that the Canon photos were overall sharper with more detail again, and I've also shared a cropped in version of the top right hand corner where you can see even in the background the Canon image has some more sharpness compared to the softer Sigma version. So this is the Canon 35mm. This isn't necessarily a bad thing when it comes down to taking portraits. For me, I don't really look at corner sharpness for my portrait photography. The face being in focus is the most important part of my image, which the Sigma is definitely able to produce. Having extra sharp images can sometimes even be a downfall with portrait photography. It can mean significant extra time spent on retouching, for example. Oh, I might actually get you sitting on that, maybe on the first step down there. So if you wanted to even like lean your elbow on your knee, might be nice. Mm -hmm. All the photos in this video are unedited by the way, so you can see what the photos look like straight out of the camera. I edited a few of my favourite portraits which I'll include throughout the video, but they are marked so you will know which ones are edited. I used my Mountains Lightroom preset pack to edit this set of pictures as I really felt like it suited the images, and I'll leave it linked down below if you guys want to check it out. 500, 2.8, 320. In this location, I was really impressed with the Sigma photos and feel like in these close-ups at f2.8, the Sigma shots actually look sharper than the Canon photos. This could be due to us shooting in the shade, there are less elements for the lens to battle with in order to be able to capture a sharp image. Might actually get like a mid body shot so I'll see like a little bit of your legs as well. Love that. I'll get a couple more in this one because I was only doing close-ups here. Here you can also see the color rendition of both lenses. The Canon 35 has a slightly warmer touch whereas the Sigma version is cooler and brings out more pinks in my model's skin tone. Both my cameras were set to manual white balance and again, all the internal settings of both my cameras were identical. 
Speaking of identical, usually we would have identical settings between the 235s, especially because they are both the same f-stop. However, as you may have noticed so far with all the settings I've been sharing of each image, that's not the case. When I shot with the exact same settings, the Sigma was always underexposed, so I compensated with the shutter speed for correct exposure. This is a sign that the t-stops between the two lenses don't match and the Sigma has a lower light transmittance. As f-stop is theoretical and not calibrated like t-stops, this is quite normal when testing photography lenses of the same apparent f-stop. This does, however, in my opinion, give the Canon 35mm Mark II a slight edge or advantage in lower light situations. Unfortunately, from here on out, we can start to see the unreliability in focus accuracy with the Sigma lens on a DSLR. I had my focus point on Katya's eyes the entire time, so there's no real reason for some photos to be in focus and some to be out, especially when I didn't have this issue with the Canon 35. However, if I was shooting on a mirrorless such as the Canon EOS R for example, we wouldn't be having this issue. Mirrorless cameras use phase and contrast AF on the sensor, unlike DSLRs which reflect light through the mirror to a separate AF sensor, so back front focusing issues don't exist in mirrorless. An important note with Sigma is that they can be calibrated with Sigma's USB dock. While it's an additional cost, it is relatively cheap and does allow you to calibrate the lens as often as you need to keep it focusing as well as possible with different bodies. So, if you want to bring your shoulder in a little bit for these ones. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of getting this Sigma lens and you shoot on a DSLR, please keep this in mind. While you can capture sharp photos, you may need to take more photos during a photo shoot to ensure that you have one that's tack sharp compared to the Canon version where you don't need to take awesome. as many That's photos perfect. as focus accuracy is more reliable. I do know this from personal experience as I own and use the Sigma 24mm 1.4 regularly and double checking that you've got the shot in focus is a must when using it professionally. <laughs> yeah, how good is it? Yeah, it's so, like, shiny. When the Sigma does get a shot in focus though, which I find it does more often when it comes to close-up portraits, it is really beautiful and, without pixel peeping too much, appears to be almost as sharp to Canon. And then I want to take photos of that pinkish tree over there. I think just there is perfect, actually. So I'm shooting these, I'm cropping about here. Yeah, the sun is so warm. In this location, I wanted to compare the bokeh of both lenses. So I picked this spot with a little bit of diffused backlight and a bushy tree in the background for the bokeh. So I agree after seeing the final images that this isn't the best example of bokeh, but it's what we had to work with in our location. I'll get a couple of close-ups here as well because the back one's really nice. That looks really nice with the arms crossed over. So I'll start um, with the further back ones here. Perfect, and then I'll get them a little bit closer. From the side-by-side -side comparison shots, I feel like the Canon bucket looks a bit cleaner, but also more subtle. The Sigma bucket is more prominent and has a lot more of a tight circle shape. And again, in the close-up version of the comparison, you can really see how the Canon bucket looks more washed out and the Sigma bucket more contrasty.
last but not least, we have a harsh light comparison where I felt like both lenses handled skin tones really well. My favorite shot out of the two ended up being a smiling portrait I took of Katia on the Sigma, which I ended up editing. Yeah, close your eyes if it like gets too bright at any point. <laughs> <laughs> so my final thoughts is that the Sigma is less than half the price of the Canon 35. So if you are on a tight budget, but after a solid 35, personally, I think that this is a great lens. For half the cost, you can still get amazing results that compare to some of the 35 greats. You just need to keep the Sigma maintained, keep in mind that it's not always perfect with focus accuracy, and get to know the lens well enough to know how to get the most of it, as you do with any lens, really. Deciding on a Sigma 35mm might be the difference between being able to afford two or three primes versus just having one Canon L series prime. If you are starting out building a kit or don't mind upgrading down the track if you ever outgrow the results or function of the Sigmas, they are great lenses. Those are all the comparisons that we're going to do for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching that behind the scenes. I'd love to know what you thought of the photos and the two lenses down in the comments below. Um, it's so windy right now. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single Wednesday and I will see you guys all next time. Bye. Uh.